already the changes that I've seen in my kitchen make me really excited. I'm like excited to spend time in there. I'm like giddy to put things away. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know exactly where this goes. And it fits exactly perfectly there. And I don't have to be stressed about like cramming things into the pantry. I want that for you. Hello, welcome back to Learning Curves. I'm Anastasia and I'm so excited about my kitchen. So if you caught my video last week on self-tember, it's about decluttering my life. Two of the things I'm decluttering are my home and my marriage. And one of the things we argue about a lot in my marriage is the kitchen. With fall and the holiday season approaching, I know I'm gonna be spending a lot more time in my kitchen. It's been something I've wanted to put time and attention into, so I've finally been doing that. In doing that, I have done a lot of research because I researched all the things. In both research and practice, I've learned so many things that I'm so excited to share with you because we all know that decluttering is a part of the process, right? And we all know, you know, a place for everything and everything in its place. But the internet doesn't give you a clear game plan for how to find out what the places should be for all of the things. And I have decoded some of that in my journey to organizing my kitchen. So in this video, I wanna share with you some tips for how you can figure out the best organizational solutions for your kitchen so you can unlock your kitchen's full potential. So the first step to recovery is always admitting you have a problem, right? The very first thing I did was decide what problems I needed to find solutions for. So in our kitchen, when I looked around at all the clutter, I was able to determine three main issues. One, we didn't have enough pantry space. We would go grocery shopping and the stuff that came in and out, the groceries that we would use a lot, a lot of them would sit on the counter until we used things in the pantry and then could put them in the pantry. The second problem is I usually cook and my husband usually cleans. I knew where things went because I was taking them out of the places, but my husband wouldn't know where things go. So not really having homes for things was another problem and not having those homes be things that everybody in the home knew about. And then the third problem is our peninsula in our kitchen kind of became a catch-all. We come in and out through our back door, so we end up putting a lot of stuff on the peninsula in our kitchen because it's kind of the first place where there's space to really set stuff down. So knowing that those were our problems, I figured our number one issue to address was the pantry space organization. And when I started looking at that, the thing that's really interesting is I thought that I needed more pantry space, but it turns out I just needed more accessible pantry space. I realized that I had some kind of prime real estate locations that were used either inefficiently, like there was dead space in there, or they were used for things that I don't actually use that often and don't need to access in the easy to reach places. So when thinking about reorganizing the things in your kitchen, there are kind of two things you should ask. Where do you use it? And how far away is it from the dishwasher? Pantry items don't really need to be anywhere near the dishwasher, right? I'm not gonna be washing an empty box of pasta. However, Tupperware with kids that go to school and with leftovers, we use a lot of Tupperware. Why not have that very close to the dishwasher so that when we're unloading the dishwasher, we can just put them all right there. We don't have to take as many trips. So the biggest thing that stood out to me with this kitchen reorganization is that I very quickly became pretty overwhelmed. We don't have a small kitchen. I mean, it's not giant, but I think we've got really good storage in that kitchen. We have a lot of cabinets. And I was like, wait, so I could move this here and then I could move that there and then I could move this there. Okay, that what other things need to be moved and what other places are now filled? So what I did was I had this, I had a few post-its left from a pad of post-its. So I cut it into thirds and I just wrote down on these strips everything. And then I walked around my kitchen. This is actually really fun. I walked around and I tagged the cabinets and drawers where I was planning to put everything. So I started with the solution to my biggest problem because that's really what everything was going to center around. So in thinking about having the Tupperware be closer to the dishwasher and thinking about needing more space, more visible, accessible space for my pantry items, there's a drawer right next to the dishwasher that has a salad spinner, a colander, and cookie decorating supplies. Why? I decorate cookies one time a year <laughs> and I do need to have the salad spinner and the colander accessible, but they don't need to be right next to the dishwasher. Neither of those ever go in the dishwasher. They both get hand washed. So I decided to take all of those things out of that drawer and make that drawer our Tupperware drawer. The drawer that had been the Tupperware drawer is right where I stand to do all of my food prep. So I thought that might be a great place for the pantry items. That drawer previously had the Tupperware and the little kids' cups and glasses. Well, those I thought I could put in these lower, long, thin drawers that I really had no idea what to do with prior because my kids could get into them. Well, 
hey, my kids can get into them. So they can go in there Montessori style and select their own cups and lids. Plus that stuff is all baby safe. So if I put my kid, my baby on the floor and let her kind of roam around, those are safe drawers for her to get into and stuff that I'm okay with her playing with on the ground. <laughs> From there, I just had to sort of cause and effect, put things where I thought they should go. Okay, my salad spinner and colander don't have a home now. Where should those go? Okay, my cookie decorating supplies don't have a home. Where should those go? This was sort of just to get an idea of where things were gonna be. The next thing I did was I looked at the areas that I was pretty confident I wanted to rearrange, specifically again that backups and canned goods area, those pantry items. And I was nervous that maybe they wouldn't all fit in this drawer. So I wanted to tackle that first. So I put them all in there and that drawer weighed a metric ton. It did not seem safe. So after some reconsidering, I had also thought about putting the pasta where I had had the canned goods and that worked fine for the pasta, but it didn't need to be there. So I swapped the pasta and the backups. This is where the monster was created <laughs> because once I saw that that simple change of putting pantry items into a drawer where they were right there where I was gonna use them and putting the Tupperware right by the dishwasher so that unloading the dishwasher was so easy, I was like, well, what other diamonds have been in the rough? So I looked around at the other drawers in my kitchen that had been really, just not user friendly. I had one that had a lot of bowls in it, a lot of ramekins and corningware. And it was just kind of all stacked on top of each other. So those are now in, it's called a lazy daisy. So I put all that kind of stuff in one level of the lazy daisy. And we kept our pots and pans where they were. And then beneath that, we had been storing our baking sheets, our cooling racks, and muffin tins and whatnot in that next drawer beneath because, hey, we're pretty close to the oven. Yeah, that's by the oven, but I don't use that stuff very often. You know, I, I am okay walking 10 feet further <laughs> to go access these baking trays when I use that. Well, the baking sheets we use a lot. Those we were able to tuck in the sides by the Lazy Daisy, <gasps> but the bottom drawer under the cooktop now has some appliances in it. On those non pull out shelves in the pantry, they're pretty deep. My baking sheets all fit in there. My muffin trays, my, I've got a donut tray because I needed it once because Oshi Glows made a donut recipe. My pie tins, my cake sheets, my spring form. I was able to fit all of that on that space. If you're feeling kind of stuck, think about a unique way that this item could be stored. If it's currently stored horizontally, could it be stored vertically? Could it hang? Could it nest with something else? My cutting boards went from being flat to vertical. I have a basket with my entertaining stuff in it. So cheese plates that I don't use very often, mustard spoons, olive forks, and cheese knives. And those are all in that same basket. Our pot holders are in a magazine file now and our baby bibs are also in a magazine file. Also, if you find yourself in a situation where there's some prime real estate that you feel like would be really great for two different categories, consider which of those categories either have more pieces to them or you use more often. So mason jars and baking supplies. I really thought about having each of those in the bottom drawer of the peninsula. I use mason jars every single day. I don't use my baking supplies that often. Who knows, maybe I'll switch them back, but that's what I'm doing right now. I also rainbow colored my cookbooks. I think eventually those are gonna go on sort of like display shelves on the side of the stove. Everything's a work in progress. I know how satisfying it is to watch those really beautiful before and after videos of kitchen organization. And I do hope that I'll have one of those for you. But like those videos all say, we should wait until we know what we're going to need when we're purchasing what they call in the home edit product. So I am trying to be really mindful about spending on storage materials for the kitchen. I have purchased a few things. I've gotten a couple Lazy Susans for the refrigerator actually. And just today I got an order from Amazon for cup hooks, over shelf cup hooks for my mugs. That organization I'm really excited about for our coffee station. That's another thing. My coffee mugs were over with my other drinking glasses because it's like, oh yeah, all the glasses go together. Well, but why? Because I use my coffee mugs over by the coffee maker. And it's closer to the dishwasher. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I am so excited. I'm so excited and I can't wait to have a full after video for you. 
of all of my beautiful organization with my matching oil and vinegar bottles, my matching spices, my everything, my coffee station. I'm so excited. That's it. I hope you liked this video. If you get any ideas from this or if you have any ideas that I need to know about before I finish with this kitchen rehaul, overhaul, you haul, me haul, we haul, you haul. It goes downhill so fast, guys. If you have any advice for me that I've left out of this video, please let me know in the comments, not the description box, the comments, because sometimes I say things right, even though their kitchen still feels kind of cluttered because of the double oil vinegar bottles and the double spices. I'm already excited to put things away. Like I got out these crackers that my baby likes to snack on when I'm trying to just like keep her busy for a minute so she doesn't go all stitch from Lilo and Stitch all over the kitchen. Last night after she went to bed, I went downstairs to do some dishes and I was like, I knew it. I can't wait to finish. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.